sorry. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank and, you. And uh, looking looking forward to working with you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Senator Wicker. Hello, Mr. Regan. Glad to uh, get a chance to see you in person, and thank you for taking the time to talk to me a couple of times on the phone when we visited. Uh, I, I, um, I mentioned that I was stationed in your hometown of Goldsboro, North Carolina for some four years. Uh, we lived on Elm Street, and it turns out we were practically neighbors. That's right. Uh, when um, when we were when we were there for the four years, uh, North Carolina has become a lot more urban since I moved away in 1980, but um, still a lot of rural, small towns, rural communities. And I would imagine a, a lot of rural water associations. Is that correct? That's correct. And you had a chance to work with them as secretary, um, uh, at DEQ secretary in North Carolina. Yes. You know, I'd see if, uh, let me ask you if you agree with this. Uh, there's not a single water association board or board member that doesn't want to comply with the Clean Water Act or the Safe Drinking Water Act. It's just a matter of having the expertise and the, the resources to do so. Am, am I generally correct there? That's correct. Um, and, and, and so it, in, in working with these volunteer association boards uh, to comply with the new requirements, uh, there, uh, there's sort of two ways to approach this. One would be to, to impose penalties on them for not getting to where they need to be. And the other would be technical assistance, financial assistance, uh, and, and uh, resources to help them get where you want them to go and where they want to get to. Um, I, I like the second approach. What do you say about that? And what's been your experience as DEQ secretary? My experience as DEQ secretary is that, uh, number one, people don't like surprises. They like to understand the rules of the road and they like certainty. And where we have been most successful is the ability to provide technical assistance so that folks do not run afoul. Okay, well, but, but also, the, a, a lot of times when, they're, when they are running afoul, as you say, it's something that they didn't bring upon themselves. It's just their inability to afford the new, uh, the, the new equipment or, or the new um, um, uh, hardware that, that it takes to, to get where they want to go. And that's where the, the assistance and the technical assistance comes in. I think you and I are on the same page there. Um, but I want to, I, I, I hope you can assure me that you're going to work in a collaborative way with these associations who absolutely want the best water uh, and the cleanest water for the members of their association in their neighborhoods. I will, and this is where the president's plan, uh, looking at the number of investments that we need in our water infrastructure is so critical. In North Carolina, we have somewhere between 17 and $21 billion worth of water infrastructure needs. We've got advanced technologies that can detect uh, water chemicals and pollutants that no one ever dreamed of. We've got to find a way to partner with these water associations, invest in this infrastructure, so that we can do a couple of things. The first is that we can protect water quality. But number two, without this infrastructure, these rural towns and cities are lagging behind in the ability to develop economically and attract businesses. So I, I think I'm, I'm understanding from your answer that uh, North Carolina rural water associations are not quite there yet either, and it's going to take some federal assistance. I think every state's struggling across the country, sir. Well, let me mention uh, one other thing. Uh, Senator Cardin uh, went on about Chesapeake Bay. Uh, Senator Whitehouse could, could hardly wait till he got to the microphone to, to mention Narragansett Bay. I'm sure they're mighty fine. Uh, there's also the Gulf of Mexico, and I certainly hope you'll be down to see us soon. Um, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. You should know, if you don't already, that after the Deepwater Horizon spill in 2010, the largest oil spill in the history of the country, Congress passed the Restore Act. And there is a Restore Council. And are you aware that they unanimously voted, this, the council unanimously voted that the EPA administrator will serve as chair of that council? You ready for that? 
I was not aware of that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm telling you for the first time that you are. And under the previous administration, the chair worked collaboratively with the five states on the Restore Council. So if confirmed, um, you're going to need to get back to us and tell us how you would work uh, and view your role as chair of the, of the Restore Council, which is responsible for deciding how uh, the support for the impacted areas will, uh, will, will be handled. Well, thank you for that. And I can tell you just based on my experience, the way I would manage that body is number one, ensuring that all of the stakeholders have a voice. Number two, that we understand what the clear rules of engagement are. And number three, that we will follow the science and the intent, the original intent of this Restore Council. I believe firmly that rules are set for a reason, that science and data can inform us, and that all people sitting at the table should have an equal voice in terms of how we move forward to find solutions. Can't wait to see you down there. And Madam Chair, I just might um, observe that as other members have found, you've sped that clock up this <laughs> afternoon somehow. And, uh, and any your time is over. able to comply with <laughs> the five minutes. Thank you, ma'am. Senator Duckworth. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm trying to start my video, but it does not seem to be working. So hopefully you can.